So that when you start looking at frequency type devices that are here in our modern day, there's two types. There's a type that John Crane was building in the 1950s. They're called contact pad devices. They have hand cylinders you hold on to. And Hulda Clark built a similar device. She called it a zapper. And it actually ran on a, 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 a frequency range. It wasn't really tunable, but uh, she demonstrated the, the ability to uh, have an effect on, on parasites and, and certain viruses and things that would fall in those ranges, little 12 volt based things. And most of them are 12 volt today. Those devices uh, are, are effective primarily in treating blood because. I don't care what they tell you, you do not get deep penetrative effects. Hall of Clark admitted to this, that there are certain parts of the body your device could never penetrate and it wouldn't. Electrical current voltage travels along surfaces. The, the blood is along the surface, so you will get effects there. But the idea that somehow you're going to get deep into the liver or the lungs or the deep recesses of the body like the prostate, uh, simply you're not going to get much of anything in there from a, uh, a handheld pad type device. So that's device number one. Those devices I compare to a stovetop as far as energy transference. You know, you put a turkey on top, you turn on the stove, and where's, where's the heat and the energy? It's, it's on the surface. There's nothing getting in there uh, deep into the bird. When you get into the type of devices Reif was building, and these are these plasma-built devices with these, these bulbs that put out electromagnetic energy fields, those go through bone, they go through steel, they go through walls. And so there's no impedance. Our devices are called plasma. You can place those in contact with the skin, and the impact is not 12 volts, but you can use them as a contact device. It's up to 45,000 volts of energy. So I tell people, when you use a true ripe device as a contact device versus a pad unit from one of these 12 volt based companies, we're in the same barnyard, but we're not the same animal. See, if you want to saddle up a racehorse, you come to us at 45,000 volts. If you want to saddle up a pig, you go to them. And I'm not saying a pig will never get you any bacon. It will. But if you're fighting for your life, you want a racehorse to get you out of Dodge. You don't want to saddle up a pig to try to get out of town, see, to get out of that problem. And so, you know, this, this is why we're so concerned about building the best equipment. The other thing you look at is when you start looking at these Rife tubes, you can't see it on this example, but on our double bubbles, and most Rife bulbs, are, they're a straight tube, they're not like this, and they have these collars on the end, is, is the manufacturer actually putting electrodes inside of their device? And these electrodes is what fires the gas and converts it to plasma. Now there's four states of matter. There's solid, there's liquid, there's gas, but we don't hear about the fourth one, and it's called plasma. And plasma is an energy field that Reif was using in order to transmit his energy fields. And that's what's generated when high voltage hits this gas that's in these bulbs. And the gas is it's pressurized. It's not a vacuum. It's just the opposite. It's actually pressurized in here. But if you don't put electrodes in, you don't get near the power into these bulbs. And so what many manufacturers do, because they want to go cheap, they wrap their high voltage line right around the outside of the glass, and then they take the collars to cover that up. They put that over the top so you can't see it, and you won't get electrocuted when you, when you grab their high voltage lines. The problem with that method of delivering energy through glass, it's like trying to eat a hot dog through your backside. It just chokes on it. It's not going to work. And that's what you see these people doing. And it's unfortunate that uh, you see those kind of things going on. But that's just one thing to look at. The other thing is the glass itself. We use a filtered glass that filters all ultraviolet ray, 100%. There's no UV ever escapes out of these tubes. There's tubes out there called Fanatron tubes. They're built in Canada. They, they're built out of quartz and pyrex. At uh, one of the Rife conferences, I did not attend this, but I heard about it held in Seattle, Washington several years ago. The manufacturer would brag about his tubes. He could bounce them off the floor, and the glass wouldn't shatter. And that's pretty neat. The problem is UV escapes from those tubes. I've taken measurements of them. I, I brought a Fanatron tube into my lab. Uh, there's not enough ultraviolet ray that if you use those at a distance, you'll ever do any damage. 
But yeah, the problem is, for example, I had a client come in, she's using a Rife tube for macular degeneration. It's right here. Or you're using a Rife tube like Royal Rife did. He did research on cataracts. Uh, the difference is, is that when you get that Thanatron tube up there with all that UV, in about an hour, you're gonna begin doing some permanent damage to your retinas. You're actually burning your eyes. Like I say, you get it out here any distance, you're gonna be fine. The frequency generator itself that you see here, our F117, it actually has a frequency generator in it, and so did Royal Rife. He used a real frequency generator. But you'll see these things advertised nowadays that say you can run these off an MP3, or we have Rife CDs you put in your stereo, or um, we have a sound card based system. Some of them will admit to that. Sound card based systems are not frequency generators. What they're selling you is a $3,600 stereo with no speakers. It's not a frequency generator. A sound card is designed for human hearing. Manufacturers can buy these for about 15 bucks. The, the, the board in here is very, very expensive. Every month, almost every month, I spend over $8,000 to bring in just boards into this business. And they're not 15 bucks a piece, I can tell you that. Our boards also have computers on board as well which adds to the cost. But when you're looking at a sound card and you talk about bandwidth, because that's what you look at, a sound card's bandwidth is 20,000 hertz. So we'll say it's like this. A frequency generator's bandwidth is 800 million cycles. It's like this. The reason you need bandwidth is so that you can do precision targeting. So the best analogy I can give you, if you buy one of these MP3 systems or these sound card based devices, they sold you a slingshot with a pebble. And imagine if you're out in the woods fighting for your life, you're looking for food, and I hand you a slingshot with a pebble, and you're doing this. You may hit something. I, I can't say it wouldn't or couldn't. It may work. But if you're fighting for your life for survival, I'd rather give you a shotgun. That's what a frequency generator is like. It's like a shotgun. It puts out a spray. It has a huge bandwidth in order to pick up things that you would never, ever be able to hit with a slingshot with any accuracy at all. And see, these are things that I, I talk to people about because in reality, for any of us here, whether it, you're dealing with a device like this or you're a healthcare practitioner here and you're offering a nutritional supplement or an herb or any type of care to help people with their health, you are not selling shoes. This is people's lives you're dealing with and there's a big difference.